We were with uh, Edgewater Hotel, um, so they came to our place, and we're gonna talk about their music journey today. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Um, first of all, probably know our audience would love to hear who are you, what you're doing with the band. So yeah. Uh, my name is Julian Powell. Uh, I'm the guitarist in Edgewater Hotel, and. Uh, this fine young man right here. Hi, I'm Jordan Sergasa. I'm the drummer in Edgewater Hotel. And yeah, we're a Toronto band that's been playing in the city for around five years now. Yes. Although with our current lineup for only about a year. When did you guys start uh, making music together? Um, we started making, well, me and Jordan and uh, our bass player started making music together uh, when we were about 17 actually. Wow. And um, since then we've gone through a lot of different changes with the lineup and with the sound of the music um, and now we're all the way up to like a six-piece band that we've been performing with for roughly a year now mm -hmm. so now uh, you have I guess how many members do you have in the band it's, a, it's six people. six right mm -hmm. yeah six and there's a saxophone player uh, so what is the reason but yeah. the reason we put the sax in with like we just started jamming with Gary mm -hmm. um, Gary's our sax player when I uh, met him at Humber College mm -hmm. and um, through that, like he just started jamming with the band and slowly developing his sound. He started using like his pedal rig mm -hmm. and stuff like that, using his ring mod and stuff to create a completely different way of using the saxophone. Mm -hmm. So really, like we're only interested in having that kind of sound in the band because it's adding such another element, mm -hmm. like a new dimension to the music. How did you guys put the band together? So I know that you guys have been playing for a while, but what about other you know members and then? Because, you know, six people, it's, it's a big band. <laughs> we've, we've experimented with a few different members over the years. And um, really, it just comes to um, who fits the sound, who understands the idea and where the band is trying to go, and then who's willing to put in the time and really like put in the effort to mm -hmm. learn all the songs, rehearse, make it to all the practices, stuff like that. It's not. Uh, it, unfortunately, it's not just being a great player. There, you, there's so much more involved that we need from the people in our band. Mm -hmm. What about your vocal? She has an amazing voice. She's very talented. Um, like, does she write the lyrics, or you guys are writing the lyrics? And how is the creative process? Um, like, coming up with someone is coming up with an idea, and then you guys are working on it, or? <laughs> <laughs> She write the lyrics, or you guys are, you guys will write well, the lyrics. Who is writing it, or like probably it depends on the song. Not every single song, but um, it definitely depends on the song. Yeah. Um, Rachel joined the band. She was the uh, just before Megan joined uh, mm -hmm. our keyboard. But, yeah. Uh, as we were assembling a new lineup over the past couple of years, basically the songwriting process usually starts with Julian. Mm -hmm. So he'll come in with um, a guitar. Like some idea on guitar, usually accompanied with some sort of lyrical idea mm -hmm. or melody, and I'll work with him on that, and then we'll show it to the band and mm -hmm. work through it that way. Like Rachel has written some of the lyrics for some of the tunes, mm -hmm. but to be honest, like, the majority of the stuff is, is coming from Julian. Mm -hmm. uh, I contribute at times to lyrics, but yeah. most of my contributions are yeah, yeah, melodies and form ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jordan really helps tie pieces of music together, mm -hmm. whereas like I'm a lot more scattered with my process, yeah. and <laughs> he really helps to narrow things down narrow and things down. Yeah. yeah, really tie the and room together. It probably helps because you guys have been playing, so you know, you guys know each other very well how it yeah. works. So that's why. As musicians, we sort of grew up together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And now I have the, you know, new EP, this is new single, not EP, right? This no, that's the EP there. Oh, you're holding it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
I know uh, the song, we loved it because we heard it, you know, at the first time, Black Market. Mm -hmm. And it actually, you know, it hooked up. Uh, like, we were like, okay, we need to see this band. Um, so, what's the story behind this song? So, uh, Black Market is really um, taking a stab at, like, the ideas of authority yeah. and kind of, uh, like, what it is that you're supposed to be versus what it is that you want to be. Yeah. And the the lyrics are a little more vague than uh, there, there's not a very clear direct statement yeah. um, there's a lot it's uh, honestly a lot of it is much more based in like image like interesting imagery mm -hmm. and um, a, a bit more like uh, kind of creepy lyrics mm -hmm. um, and, uh, <laughs> no I love the lyrics uh, it's, not, it's not creepy it's like but like you can't just you know read them and then understand what is it about it's just like it, it's up to your imagination, like how you think. Like yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. As as our songwriting develops, we are trying to develop much clearer uh, pictures and uh, directions in our lyrics. Because um, this song was actually written um, almost two years ago, or at least uh, at least a year and a half ago. But do you have to, you know, say what you want to say? Like, you know, do you have to be clear? I don't think so. You don't have to be clear. I think clear. it depends on, like, on your goal as a songwriter. Like, what you what you hear on our EP is, like, those are some of the first songs we wrote with our current lineup. Like, striving for the sound that uh, we now try to produce. Having vague lyrics is a lot of fun sometimes. Like, we like allowing the listener to kind of create their own story, you know, just based on the images that we offer to them. Mm -hmm. At the same time, as we develop more, uh, I guess I'd say, distilled ideas of what we want our songs to actually say to people, we also need to distill the lyrics down yeah. to what exactly like encapsulates the point that we're trying to make, right? Because in, in that way, <laughs> by doing that, like we can actually express something specific. You know, rather than having a specific thing to express and expressing it vaguely and allowing someone else to create their own idea of it. It's just different goals. Not yeah. necessarily better or worse than yeah. I'm asking this question to every single musician, because uh, it's I guess it's quite interesting. So uh, the basic goal, uh, I know that making good music, right? So you wanna express yourself, you wanna make good music, but at the same time there's an audience. So, how you can make a balance uh, between making really good music and expressing what you feel and also uh, meeting the audience expectations? <coughs> well, we've been working on trying to understand the expectations of our audience for, for a while as well. Like, I feel like that's sort of the first step, is to try to understand who it is that seeks out our music and, and wants to listen to it and then try to understand what it is they want from that experience. Mm -hmm. But I think just generally what people want from music is is some sort of communication. Mm -hmm. Like We are in a position of, of speaking, like we're saying something. Mm -hmm. And the audience is receiving that thing that we say, and how we say it contributes to the experience that they're having. So how well we learn to communicate yeah. with those people mm -hmm. determines how good our music is, and like how good it is uh, in the eyes of the R you know, it's how well we learn to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, I know you guys are gonna play in Silver Dollar on January 9th, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you've been playing in Toronto for a while, but do you have any plans for touring in Canada, or Ontario, in GK? We would like to make our way outside of Toronto. Um, do you, like, the issue is always like organizing people's schedules and stuff yeah. and making sure that we're not Though it, that it's a good business decision on our part. We can't just go take off for however many days and come back like empty-handed. Mm -hmm. It has to be like a specific approach to the tour and a goal in mind that we're trying to achieve mm -hmm. when we take off. Because there's so many venues in the city. We could yeah. play every every night. You could play a different venue, and it would take a while before you start, you know, cycling through them. But um, is really having a direction and a really like a, like a, a business plan <laughs> set mm -hmm. up for your tour so that you know um, why it is that you're that you're leaving the city mm -hmm. okay I'd, I'd actually like to answer that too because like um, like we do want to be hitting some southern Ontario towns and stuff mm -hmm. like that we do want to get out to Montreal as well mm -hmm. 
uh, but right now because of the headquarters cooperative we're focusing on Toronto so the headquarters cooperative is is a bunch of musicians that and we're a part of this cooperative effort to run events in the city mm -hmm. and essentially like through that we have the opportunity to start building scene here and be a part of something that's really awesome that's been growing over the past year and is like launching in earnest uh, in 2015. Mm -hmm. So we will start targeting stuff out of town, like um, some shows maybe in Guelph and Hamilton. Yeah. But uh, right now our main goal is to build a scene in the city. For the new EP, so you guys released it, uh, probably is pretty uh, new, I know, because we were there at the concert. Um, so how is it going on uh, with the new EP? So, you know, any feedback from the audience? Um, anything? We've had generally a good response. The biggest, uh, the biggest thing is funny enough, not the music, but the packaging. Mm -hmm. People oh. got really into the packaging. And the okay. fact that you get like the room key and the sealed envelope and all that stuff that comes with it. Yeah. Uh, the music itself, people seem to enjoy, although it's not necessarily indicative of the sound that we're now striving for. So we're really excited for the next EP and the next series of singles that we have coming out in the new year. Mm -hmm. It's going to show like, you can only do so much in three songs. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Yeah. That's so there's a whole other side to this band that people haven't had the chance to hear recorded yet. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to show them that with, uh, with the stuff that we have coming out in the new year. Okay, where did you guys record it? Uh, Is that Humber College? Humber College, yeah, okay. Studios there. Uh, Mac Brady from EMAC uh, Studios up in London, Ontario, mixed up with the engineering sessions. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds pretty good. Um, so, and my last question would be about the name of the band. <laughs> So what's the story behind this? Uh, why Edgewater uh, Hotel? Edgewater Hotel was uh, an old hotel in Toronto that was right down at Queen and Ross's Vales. Mm -hmm. And um, before they took the sign down, I was actually down there uh, checking out the antique shops and I saw the sign and we were looking for a band name at the time and I'd always really liked the idea of something that tied us to Toronto. And uh, Edgewater Hotel just seemed like a great fit. Mm -hmm. Because you want to a concert, you know, you want people to consider you as a Toronto based band, so that's why you know, maybe it will be a good fit. Well, yeah. we want to uh, make reference to our city, right? Yeah, we're really right. proud to be from here, and yes, like, being yeah. able to constantly make reference to it, like just through that being our band name, is important to us. It's also, uh, from what we've heard from parents and friends uh, in the <laughs> older generation, it was a disgusting, dirty beer hole. You know? <laughs> and we played really punky music when we chose that name, and it fit with us quite well. Yeah. But uh, as the music evolved, I um, feel the name kind of, you know, stuck it out with us <laughs> okay. over the years. Sounds good. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Uh, thanks for, you know, coming out and sitting with us. So. Um, as we are Dear Music, we promote local bands in Toronto, um, so we would recommend you guys to check Dear Music, go for Silver Dollar, uh, do the beer, you know, support the band, have some good time, listen to the music. Come say hi. <laughs> Come